I forgot to mention something about eyes and symmetry. I think I told you this. My right eye is literally, it looks smaller than my left. It isn't smaller, they're both the same size, but this right eye is farther back in the occipital bed that it sits in, my optical little cushion. It's farther back in my head. That determines if somebody has big, beautiful eyes or medium eyes or tiny little eyes. It depends on how far back or close the eyeball sits in its optical bed. And this, wait, I got a picture to prove. <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> Why am I doing it? When I was a year and a half, you could see it. That's me and my mom. I don't know if you can see. If you look at, <laughs> I can't see what you're saying because I can't see. But wait, let me look over here. If you look real close, you see my right eye is smaller than. <laughs> okay, forget that. We want to talk about Christopher Columbus, and that's that. He never existed. How about that? Europeans know that. Uh, in the West, our history books tell us something different. They always will because people who publish these books, they answer to somebody else, and there's money involved, and it takes too much money, expense, and trouble to get this right. There is no record of a Christopher Columbus being born in Italy, anywhere. He was not of the Genovese family of merchants, weavers. He was a Catalan. He was born in Spain, in Catalonia. Now, this is just based on my own internet research and library research. Take it all you. And National Geographic did a special on this. He was Spanish. His last name was Colon, which is a Catalan, a Catalan name. C-O-L-O-N. Colon. There's, there's a record of this. There's no record of it. Christopher Columbus. There is a Christopher Colombo in Spain and a Christopher Colon. In his, in Seville, in Spain, there, there is so much of his writings. He wrote and wrote and wrote, and the only way that could be possible was if he came from a noble family or a rich family that could educate him, which he did. And in his ship's log, his captain's log, right? Captain's log, start date 1492, start it, right? Dee -dee -dee -dee. Live long and prosper. Look what I can do. I could do it backwards. Live long, live long and prosper, but what does that mean? Okay, getting back to the story. Um, it seems he was Spanish. And no, he wasn't uh, a spy, and he wasn't uh, any of these other things that come out, it seems we're getting more and more accurate history, which is good. But he was convinced, as were many people, that there was this promised land out there, which of course was our continent, between Spain and the West Indies. They thought something was going on. He was kind of, he was a very good navigator as were his peers. But when he landed on the coast of what was to become America, he thought he was in the West Indies. He thought he missed it. This, the, the, that was, what, what do they call that? That uh, uh, program, the, the something of discovery, you know, the, the the sailing of this cover. I, I forget what it's called. I'll ask the almighty G what it was. But when he got here, he 
Of course, half the men had died. They all had sickness, scurvy, cholera. They had died and all this. But when they got, finally, they found land. They were so happy they found land. And they came out, eventually met the indigenous people who Christopher Colon knew were not Christians because they were naked. And he wrote in his log, the West Indies is very vast and the natives are friendly. These Indians, he called them because he thought he was in the West Indies. And he called them Indians and everything worked out great in the beginning, actually. They, they were getting along. Uh, everybody's friendly and all this. When people started getting sick, the Europeans believed it was a curse from God. And the reason for that curse was because they weren't converting these Indians, as he called them, to Christianity. That was a hard thing to do. Uh, all of these people were enmeshed in their culture for hundreds of thousands of years. I'll tell you the rest of the story about this. This is already six minutes, six and a half oh, minutes. Okay, I'll come back and tell you the rest of the story because I don't want to bore you.